first thing, Officer Jones, we would ask is, you know, what was the impetus to do that Facebook Live? Um, actually, I was I was asleep. I didn't even. I was actually resting, and my son came home from work. I mean, and he was like, "Mom, did you see this shooting on TV?" I'm like, "What?" And at first, I did, I'm thinking, "Okay, is this what kind of shooting?" And when he showed it to me, and I saw it was um, two police officers. I always try to be objective because I am a police officer and I do wear the badge. But then I also have two African American sons and my, my brother's African American. So I'm looking at it and I like I said I looked at it over and over and over again and my son wants to go to school in Louisiana. And I'm looking at it and I'm looking at it and I became immediately outraged and I felt like somebody had stabbed me in the chest. And I was so upset about it. I'm like, you know what, enough is enough. And I spoke, I had no idea this was gonna go by. That was not my, I don't like attention like this. Um, I just spoke out and I thought it was just gonna be my Facebook friends, you know. Um, and usually I don't say too much. I try to stay to myself because I know a lot of people will say certain things and it's an argument. I never wanted it to be an argument. This is just what my heart felt. And I just spoke out. This happened when you made that. This was before you knew about what happened in uh, Minnesota, right? Yes, yes, sir. How does that now? I imagine it makes the feelings even greater. Yes, sir. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Just looking at that was like, what is happening? I just saw this and now I'm looking at this. And of course, again, I always try to analyze everything. I looked at it over and over again and it just broke my heart. And I'm like, come on, y'all, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I'm like, not only as far as police killings and, and 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 minorities, but also the minorities killing each other. Like I said, I looked at it from both points of views. I've taken guns off eight-year-old children, 13 real guns. I'm not talking about the fake guns. You know, I've, I've been in a situation where a female had a knife coming towards me. I could have shot, but I chose to do a little different. Everybody has a different perspective on everything, and I, I respect anybody that disagrees with me. This was just my perspective. So I'm saying, come on, y'all, we got to bond together. We need to do something. The good officers, a lot of them won't stand up and say anything, but us in the community needs to bond together. I'm telling the juveniles, put these guns down, y'all. Listen, I'll be a cow. I'll stand there and stand there with you to put them down. I'll stand there. I'll, I'll stand in the gap for you. The police department, I'll be the, I'll be that bridge between us, but this has got to stop. This is really what is tearing me apart. And like I said, I didn't want this media attention. This is not what I did it for. I'm just a heartfelt person. I just think that we need some kind of change. What type of reaction have you gotten from your fellow officers? I can't really speak on it. I mean, I've had, I've gotten up some love from some of them. Like I said, everybody's gonna have their opinion and I, I won't speak against their opinion. One thing that we've heard in covering police shootings from the media side is you're not out there. You don't know what the situation is. That's really different with you. You are out there. You are having to deal with very dangerous situations. What kind of credibility do you think that lends you in addressing this matter of police shootings? Um, like I said, it's my personal opinion, but I do, like I said, when I looked at it, I looked at it from a police standpoint. In my opinion, it's just my opinion, I feel like it could have been handled differently. I'm saying if I, I've actually been in positions where I've taken, I'm saying I feel like I would have handled it differently. So that's why I said, look, murdered this man on TV. That's why I said that. I'm not saying that every shooting is wrong. I'm, I've never said that. I've never said every police officer because I work beside some excellent police officers that I know for a fact it would take a bullet for anybody. I'm just speaking on the ones that we have an authority. We have the authority to take your, your freedom from you. That's, that's strong right there in itself. We also have the, we have the authority to take your life. That's something I can't give that back to your family. So I'm just saying if you're a police officer and you're in that position and you have a God complex or if you don't like a certain race and you're taking it on this, whether it's white, black, Hispanic, whatever, you should not be wearing this uniform. It's, you need to take the uniform off. This is not the job for you. That's all I'm saying. It's just, and I'm standing in the gap because I am a police officer and I feel like I should be able to speak out. <laughs> officer, well, you mentioned your children and you know what this has been like for you coming from a police officer standpoint, but also from an African American standpoint, what do you tell them now with what you've seen over the last two days with these shootings? 
you know, I, I try, and even in my community, and I can't speak on it, but I volunteer my time. I go speak to the youth. I tell them, how, how do you react to a police officer? This is what you do. With my children, I try to educate them. My children aren't even allowed to play with play guns. But that's because I get to see what other people don't see. So I educate them. Listen, if you stop by a police officer, this is how you react. But I try to talk to them. Every police officer isn't bad. I try to educate them so that I don't want my children to live in fear, but I also don't want them to do something that's just completely out of line where a police officer would have the justification to shoot them or could say, well, I could justify this. So I try to educate my, my children. I, my children are my world. And I look at my son is about to go to college. My son is a 4.3 GPA. My son is an amazing man. When I tell you, I'm so proud. He wants to be a neurosurgeon. So I, I always, I educate him. He's doing very well in the community. But I educate my son, and that's why I said, looking at my son, God, I don't want that to happen to my son. So that's why I was really compassionate to speak. My son's about to leave me. He's going out of state. So that's why. So what will it take to, in your opinion, to lessen or stop these police shootings? I think the community needs to band together, honestly. I think the community needs to sit down and everybody needs to have an open mind. Nobody needs to go in judgmental. If we can get everybody on an open platform and say, hey, listen, listen to our side. I'm talking about the good police officers. I'm not talking about all that crazy. And I'm not talking about people that want to break the law. You have your people, that this is just who they are. I'm talking about people that are saying we want to change in a community period. If we can all sit down on a platform and hear each other, we don't hear each other. Everybody wants to point the finger. You know, well, your cops are bad here. Well, y'all shooting each other. No, everybody needs to sit down and say, what can we do to bridge the gap between the police department and the community? I think that's the first step. When, that's, you, when you look at police shootings, that I mean, of course, you're seeing a variety of them. From your perspective, do you think a lot of times they're justified that they're not? I mean, what, what is your take on the state of these police shootings that we're seeing? It depends. I look at everything on an individual basis. There are some shootings that... that they may say, somebody may say, it wasn't justified. And I may say, in my opinion, it was. So I don't just group everything in one. I would never do that. That would be an injustice to myself as an officer and as a person, period. I look at it and I see what I see and, I, and then I make an opinion. And I still could be wrong, but this is just my opinion. What did you think about what happened in Louisiana? That hurt me. It's just... Because at this me point... What it, what it feels like to have to make that snap decision because I know that you've been in situations like that and what goes through an officer's mind regardless I guess of that but just that snap decision it's extremely hard and people don't understand that most jobs you make a mistake you can go back and cover it up you can go back and fix it and it's fine we have a split second to make a decision a life or death situation do I think most officers out there go oh, I'm coming to work to kill no but in that snap it's just a quick second do you shoot or you don't shoot it's it's like oh my god and you like okay if i make the wrong decision i may not go home to my family you know what i'm saying if i make the wrong what if this person really doesn't have a gun oh my god how can i and me being a police officer i'm telling you if i shot and killed an unarmed person and later on it would mess me up it would it would tear me up inside like i said i became a police officer to make a difference and i do it every day i work i do it with integrity and with respect period that's that's why i put on a uniform and any time that i feel like i can't do it that way i will take that uniform off you have my word i will not wear that uniform ever again how do you, you talked about good and bad